Yeah, the, the usual uh, intro. Okay. I think everybody knows. The floor is yours. All right, thank you. Welcome, everyone. This is the weekly TSC call. This is a public call. Everybody is welcome to join and contribute. There is two requirements to doing so, though. The first one is uh, to be aware and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed on your screen if you join in online. The other piece is the code of conduct. It basically requires everybody behaves respectfully and as a decent human being. With that taken care of, you're all welcome to join and participate. So um, we didn't have a call last week. As you know, for those who are new, this is a fairly uh, frequent occurrence. You know, I will try to keep the short, you know, busy. So the, sorry, the call fairly busy. So we don't have just like calls for the sake of it. I'd like to have a precise agenda so we know why we are calling in. And if there is not, you know, enough material for me to feel like this is worth spending, you know, everybody's time. I'll just call it off and push it to the next week. So that's what I did last week. And uh, I always give a chance to people to let me know if there's something that needs to be discussed this week rather than, you know, postponed. So I always first send an email at least a day ahead asking if there's anything else that I need to be aware of that makes it worth keeping the call. Otherwise, I'll just, you know, postpone like I did last week. So, and this has worked well so far. So I think uh, every, you know, has liked that process. So I will keep it that way for the foreseeable future. So, um, is there any announcement? There's none that, that I know, but maybe somebody has some. This is a good time to bring anything if you'd like. Uh, in general, I would ask anyone that has technical stuff that they would like to add to our weekly newsletter to please do that. That's that's it. Okay, maybe you need to tell them how they do they go at doing this. Uh, okay, I will. Uh, I'll post a link in the chat. It's you make a comment on the wiki page, and then uh, the it's edited together, and it goes out as part of the newsletter. Yeah, thank you, Rai. And by the way, uh, Rai referred to the chat. We typically don't use the chat of the Zoom meeting, but we use the TSC Rocket Chat channel. So if there is anything you want to say on the side, uh, this is where to go to the TSC uh, Rocket Chat channel. All right, with that taken care of, let's keep moving. There was uh, one quarterly report submitted from the technical working group uh, in China. Um, J, I mean, we don't actually require quarterly reports from the working groups unless they produce technical content that we should be aware of. But uh, the China group tends to submit one every now and then, gives us an opportunity to know what they're up to. And so I encourage everybody to go ahead and have a look. Uh, I think uh, it was submitted shortly before. So uh, I don't think many people uh, had a chance to look at it. I had a couple of questions I asked directly in comments to the wiki page. Jay has uh, responded clarifying. Unless there's any questions or comments on this, I'll just move forward. Yes, Arun. Hi, Arnold. So this is not a question on this report to be specific. This is in general to ask how long do we, how long can we go back to this specific report? For example, this week I may not get time to review this. So probably can I bring this up in next meeting? Yeah, so usually, you know, I, I make sure that um, it stays on the agenda until, you know, people have had a chance to bring stuff like, you know, some when, when it's like this, typically, I'll put it again on next week's call. Um, 
so that you know obviously the only like what three or four people uh, check the boxes saying they have reviewed it so i usually bring keep i mean carrying it for i carry it forward on the agenda until you know i've seen like a significant number of people have reviewed it so one or two calls typically got it thanks okay Sorry, that Mark. We, we can add comments to the report at any point in time. Yes, of course. So this is only in case there is something else that you know you have you want to have a live discussion on or bring up. Otherwise, of course, as Mark says, we are you know you're welcome to comment and request information on the wiki page directly. It's actually the favorite way, the preferred way of interacting because it's offline. It allows us to all uh, work uh, asynchronously, which is better if, if it suffice. Sometimes, obviously, we do require uh, discussion and that's not enough. That's why we have a chance to bring it up during the TSC calls. Okay. Tracy. Tracy. Uh, so, I noticed in the report, I reviewed it, um, but I didn't make this comment and maybe should have, but the two tools under the performance uh, SIG that are listed there um, for the representatives who are part of the uh, China working group that are on, uh, you might want to consider bringing those as hyperledger maps um, so that they can get a wider audience taking a look at them as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Um... Uh, hey, this is Jay. Uh, hey, Tracy, thanks for the comment. Uh, so we have a actually organization is called Hyperledger TWGC, which is established by, I think, Lynx Foundation. And we are planning to bring these two tools into that space. And we're currently establishing some process and uh, criteria for this uh, space. So wait, what is that space you're talking about, Jay? Uh, you can, uh, if you go to, uh, I think, hi, uh, GitHub slash Hyperledger dash TWC. Ah, okay. So in the TWC working group repo. Yeah, we have a repo. I mean, it's not a repo, but it's a GitHub space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I think these tools are still too tiny for uh, Hyperledger Labs, but we're happy to take it to the TWGC space. And we have some Azure pipeline stuff. That's cool. The only, you know, if the only problem that, that I see with this is that, you know, I think you would have more visibility if you brought it to the labs. And if it's not Chinese specific, I don't know why it would be limited to, you know, the Chinese space. We have, uh, uh, Dano has his hand up. Yeah, but let me, let, let Jay answer, please. Uh, I mean, first of all, we probably don't have uh, any sponsor to, for them to be uh, getting to uh, Hyperlabs, Labs. And uh, I mean, I, we don't really have a, I mean, just, I think these tools are still tool, I'd say newborn for labs. Okay, they, 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 just to clarify, I mean, I think you have too high an expectation on the labs. Some of the labs start with <laughs> nothing except a, a short description of a few lines. So the bar is on purpose, right? Purposefully very low. Lab is the space for people to do experiment. So I have no doubt this would qualify for it, just so you know. So let me go to the queue because I want to respect other people's requests to talk. Dano is first. Um, so I noticed you're using subgroups called SIGs. My concern is with the use of the term SIG because Hyperledger does have SIGs. They account to the governing board, like the capital market SIG. I wonder if a different phrase might be a little better used for the subgroups. I think it's a great idea to you know, maybe a different word. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, we could just rename it. I mean, we don't really use English names anyway, so we can name it as a subgroup or sub working group or anything. 
other suggestions? Or the Chinese name, that worked too. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point, I agree with you. That's why I asked the SIG, because we do have a SIGs in Hyperledger and it's not the same kind of group. So it would be good to have a different name if possible. Okay, sure. I mean, we will, I mean, we will come up with something new, but this is only really used for our report. Uh, so yeah, thanks. I will change the Just name. Call it whatever you want. You can call it subgroup. Or okay, sure. Subworking group SWG. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Tracy? Yeah, I just want to say, uh, Jay, you may not have noticed this on the TSC chat, but uh, if you are looking for a sponsor, uh, feel free to put my name down for those two if you'd like to bring them to lab. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will talk to the uh, authors of these tools and uh, I will shoot you a message. Thanks, yeah, Tracy. Thanks, yeah. All right. Thank you. Anything else? I think it would be good to get the, I mean, I don't know if you had any connections with the performance and scale working group. Uh, they might have an interest in what you're doing there or the Caliper project since you're measuring stuff. But uh, yeah. For awareness, it would be good to have some connection there. Actually at the very beginning of this performance sub working group, we were planning to join the uh, performance uh, the working group, basically using the same time of the meeting. But then we found out that the uh, Perf WG meeting was actually canceled quite often. And we, so we just uh, simply go ahead and do our own meetings and in Chinese probably. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely looked at the, uh, the Hyperledger working group of performance. And we also look at the Caterpillar project. And the reason we came up with a little new tool for measuring stuff is simply because it's more lightweight and uh, easier to use, but it's definitely not as full featured as Caliper. Uh, it just has its own probably pros and cons. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Jay? Okay, thank you for submitting the report and being here to answer questions, Jay. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks. All right. So we have two other reports that are due. Indy, I would expect to receive it. Burrow, I'm not sure. They already warned us that uh, they would have a, they would be on, a, what do you call that, like on a pause for this quarter. So I don't know if we can expect much of a report at this point. We may not get any for this quarter. And I think that's okay. So let's move on. Then I have put on the agenda a call for decision. Um, we dis dis you know, I brought that up last week or last call, I should say, uh, already. It didn't seem like there was much controversy. The idea was, you know, as we've discovered, I think there is general agreement that the quarterly reports, even though we all review them, we don't necessarily get the full picture of what's going on in those projects. And so as part of trying to improve on the information that's being brought to the TSC, so we do get a better idea of what's going on, uh, I thought we should leverage the uh, Linux Foundation Insights tool that uh, we have at our disposal now and that Rai has actually uh, customized to fit the Hyperledger uh, projects. And so there's a lot of data available and you know, of course the point is anybody can go and check that out every single time, anytime you want. And of course, when you get a report, you could take the action to just go on your own and check the, the dashboard for the given project you're looking the, at the, you're looking the, uh, the report for. But uh, I thought it would be good to just have the project report on that you know, include that in their report to just make it easier. And I saw Tracy, so last week I brought, or last call I brought that up, didn't seem to be controversial, but we didn't really make a formal decision. 
I would like to make a decision so that it's recorded, that we agree this is a requirement and from the projects from then on. And so we should update the template for the reports so that it's highlighted. Um, and we can then expect projects report to, to report on that. And um, I would expect, you know, if people, because I know what it's like, you take typically the report from last time and you just start with a copy and then you update it. I think we all do that. It's a natural thing to do and it's convenient to do that in the wiki, which means if you do that, you're missing, you don't actually use the template every single time and you will miss the fact that we have changed the template. But so it is, it is upon us to, you know, uh, as reviewers to point out, hey, you're missing the report, please add this, you know, and it might take like, you know, uh, at least a few quarters for all the, the projects to have reported and, uh, and, and, and for us to have brought that up so that the report include this. And then from then on, I think it will naturally be there. So I saw there were some comments about what exactly, you know, should be, how it should be included. This is something Ryan and I had a discussion about uh, uh, offline uh, uh, two weeks ago. And we're trying to find some kind of like, low hanging fruit what is how can we make it easy for people to have that information and the point is we don't want we want that information because you know if you just link to the top page it's not very useful we want it to be you know narrowly uh, scoped to the project and to the period you're reporting on and so it would be nice to have that done automatically but i don't want right to take yet another project to built a, a whole you know robot around that so we came up with this url that is pretty simple there's two two key factors you know two parameters in there that each project will have to update at least once you have the name of the project that you need to put but that would be only once and then you would just change the dates for the range right it's from and to and I think it's a fairly simple edit. When you put your report together, you have the link and you just change the range and automatically people are given the link that will give them the letters information that's relevant to the report. So that's my proposal. I think this is something that doesn't require much effort from the reporter and it does provide us with, you know, uh, in one click, the relevant information, but. I'm happy to hear other people suggestions if there are others, but um, that's my take on this. So Tracy, I know you thought maybe you could do more than that. Yeah, I was looking forward to two things. One, to automate this, because um, I feel like this would be a pain for projects. Um, secondly, uh, you know, to include it directly in the report uh, versus having to click on a link. Um, I think the less links you can add to things uh, that people have to click on, the more likely it is that they're going to look at it um, versus not clicking on the link to go look at it. So that, those are my two um, improvements to this, right? Like I'm not, I, I'm not adverse to the proposal. I just, I'd like to ensure that, it, and if we can't do it now, that's, that's one thing, but like in the future, uh, if we can somehow make these things happen to make it easier, I think that's where we should head. I have a I have a question after Hart has his word. Maybe you should go first. Okay, my my question is: uh, Are are we talking about monuments in time? So the this report data will change over time, and we could have a discussion about how things were in the past, and then they would change as 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 things change. Uh, should this perhaps be a PDF of of the report or something of that nature that's static? Um, that that's my question. Wait, I don't understand. You need to clarify because if we set the range, that's not going to change, is it? Uh, well, what if you add what if you uh, add a uh, add a new project, right? So Fabric adds a new uh, repo. Uh, and the the numbers for the the previous time will show that there were uh, it may show that there was a, a jump 
So this repo comes in from outer space. It has contributions in that time, in that time frame, right? It, it lands under fabric. And now the statistics that were under discussion at the time of the report are no longer reflected wow. in the link. I see. One thing that would help would be just to pick a few key metrics like number of commits and have a trend line of the last four quarters in each report. Um, yeah, right. Spark lines for the win. I, I think if you want to do something static like that, you know, I, I, that that's probably the ideal solution um, if it's easy to do. Uh, but I do like Tracy's suggestion that uh, sort of the less clicks, the better, and the more we can directly include it in the report, uh, you know, the better as well. That being said, I think this overall is, is a great idea and we're just talking about sort of implementation details. Um, so if, if we have some language that, you know, just basically says we're doing this, I would be all in favor of, of passing it today. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, these are good improvements. I wouldn't want to stop it. I think, you know, everybody agrees that we need, this is a good direction to follow anyway. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued by the, the, the scenario Wright just talked about. Maybe there's a middle ground and, you know, there's gonna be, there's a trade off between how much we can ask the reporters to put in and, and, and the burden we are adding to them, right? It's like, they could take a snapshot of the page at the time they do it and the link and, you know, <laughs> you would have kind of both. But, um, and, and can we embed the whole page in the wiki? Is it, that's a technical question. I don't know the answer. Yes, to. that would be nice. I'm saying yes, because that's a big chunk. I mean, there's like, you know, if you look at our reports today, they're pretty small. And if you add like two pages of graphs and stuff, I mean, it's okay. Sorry to interrupt. Are these metrics consistent across all the projects or do we need to fix them, go by configuring something in here? No, so that's a different story. There is the work on the insights. If people, I mean, they are consistent across all the projects and uh, there are scripts that are running automatically and updating all these data, all these dashboards. It's run on all the projects and if there are, if people have feedback on how to improve or bugs they see, just go to Rye and let him know it'll fix it. So, okay, so quickly, can we embed that in the page? I'm all for it if it's simple enough that people can do there's, that. There's a confluence map or like insert page or extract. HTML or something like that. I can't remember what it is. It's been a while since I've used it, but there is definitely um, a mechanism to do that. Okay, so I will try to punt on that one and say, you know, go back to what Hart was saying. This sounds like an implementation detail, though I think it's a one that we care about. So I would propose we, you know, we, we, we approve this proposal as stated, and then, you know, put an action item to investigate how the, the, the data could be embedded into the page so that people have the information without having to click on the link. And if, you know, we can figure this out, I'm happy to have that included as part of the implementation. I don't think it makes a big difference. When we update the template, we can put the right magic so that uh, it's embedded as opposed to just have a simple link. Does that work? Okay. I don't hear anybody anymore. I will take uh, silence for consent. Can we therefore, I would like to uh, move for the approval of this proposal.
Anybody wants to second it? I'll second, sure. All right. Um, how about we try to use the Zoom feature? TSC members, you can click yes, the yes button if you agree, no if you disagree, or do nothing if you just abstain, I guess. Or I don't know what is. I thought we had found something for that. I think it was like the coffee symbol or something. Oh uh, yeah, you can use the clock or something like this to say you're abstaining. Can I click go faster to make the meeting go faster? If you want, yeah. Uh, I we only yeah. have uh, Gary and uh, and ADC Angelo DeCaro haven't voted, so I think it passes with two abstentions. All right, so yep. that's good enough for me. 12 yeas. 12 yeas, two abstentions. Recorded. Thank you. This is there before approved. Good. We have to cancel the yeses, I guess. All right. Very good. Thank you. Let's move on then. Back to the agenda, please. Okay. So, I mean, Arun, you had volunteered to make some proposal for the rollover project issue. I didn't see anything. Is that okay? Did I miss it? Or? No, you. I did. I did not send it over. The document okay. which I started once incomplete. Hey, uh, if you would allow me to speak one more on the previous point, right? So, since we still have open items, do you think it's better to keep that as an agenda item so that we clarify those open items? With, by maybe follow-ups with Rai and others. You're talking about the decision we just made there? Yes, so decision is approved, but how about the follow-up so that we answer those open questions which we just had, how to embed the reports and what if the time range spills over, how do we take that screenshot? Do we Are we okay with attaching PDF? Those were still the yeah, open I questions. Yeah, that, that's fine. We can put an, uh, as part of the action items, we can put uh, action item to report back to the TSC about the details of the implementation. Sure, okay. thanks. Yep. That's good, thanks. Okay, so we'll skip the rollover of projects issue for now. Then Arun, and I want to thank him. I mean, I actually met Arun during the Hyperledger member summit and noticed that he had a lot of uh, ideas. And so I'm not surprised that he's one of the people who respond to my call for ideas and agenda items. So I uh, basically put the, the different points that he brought up in his email. Um, I'll, uh, so the floor is yours, Arun. You wanted to talk about allowing new projects under the hyperledger in reference to the stack. I mean, there was a stack that was presented during the member summit. I was looking for it. I didn't find it. Maybe the staff can help us there. Okay. But uh, Arun, go ahead. Awesome. Thank, thanks, um, Arnott. So yeah, this is one of the topic which was brought up during the member summit. And I attended at least two uh, time zone sessions, if not all three. And then this was highly discussed among those two sessions where I attended, right? And one of the things which multiple organizations over there brought up was how do they get involved? So the, the speed for um, speed of adop adoption and then the readiness of application for, for the blockchain adoption is what they are looking at. And then the other question was, uh, how do we compare Hyperledger versus some of the other offerings out there? which is not under Hyperledger. And the suggestions which people gave were referencing to the document which was sent out a few days before the, uh, the member summit. And then I'm not sure if Rai has that diagram. That diagram actually lists four different areas around which uh, for, for any blockchain application adoption, right? So it, it layers them into four different um, uh, technology suits. How I, I don't know how to put it in better terms. Why do you have that? Maybe we can share that. I don't know if Ray is going to. Have that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, if you give me a URL, I'll open it. Brian might remember. 
I'll, I'll try to find in my mails. Brian might remember that diagram. Hi, okay. I mean, yeah, I can share the graphic. It's in the member report, so it's a member document, but I will put it into the chat in a second, the, the graphic. All right, thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. Right, so this question to the TSC over here is, how far in the stack, in, in that diagram, should we go with respect to uh, like having projects under Hyperledger? And where should we limit ourselves in, in Hyperledger? So some of this is answered in the charter and has been, you know, refined over the years, I would say, by, you know, having projects being submitted to the to, to Hyperledger in at least one instance, the TSC was ensured this was in scope. We actually escalated the issue to the board, which ultimately is in control of what we do. And uh, they gave us direction for, you know, further direction. And um, we therefore agreed to go ahead. That was in the case of the grid project, which was higher up than all the other projects we had been tackling to, to, the, to that point. And there were questions about whether this was within the scope or not. Um, but I thought, so I, I'm interested to kind of hear what your idea is, you know, beyond that, because, you know, for those who are not aware, there's actually one of the open issues we have on the decision log. If you look back, there's like long-term agenda uh, framing, I think it's called uh, issue, which very much talked about this, you know, Dan uh, Middleton had brought that up and it was, the idea was like, well, you know, beyond what we're doing, what are we missing? What should we have as a goal? And I kind of like the, the, the idea, I mean, the, the, the topic, because, you know, a lot of people have been lamenting on the fact that TSC doesn't, be, doesn't seem to be steering much. And this is one area where we could possibly say, you know, oh, this is an area where we have a gap and maybe it would be good to welcome projects. At the same time, you know, there's a limit to how much we can do on, this front, on that front, because at the end of the day, anybody can make a project proposal at any time and we will look at them. We don't have resources we can throw out you know, we cannot just say, yes, let's create a project in that space because there's a gap. We can suggest that this would be a good idea and the TSC would welcome a project proposal in a, in a specific area. But uh, that's about as far as it can go because we don't have resources we can allocate and say, yes, we'll put resources into that project. Although the staff might at some point, you know, I know Brian has been toying with the idea of maybe using some of our budget to, you know, put resources into specific projects if that helped. But uh, this is not something that has been done so far. And, uh, you know, well, I wouldn't necessarily count on it at least. So this is the stack you were talking about, Arun? That's right. This is the one which I was talking about. So in okay, the so, one side, it says, it kind of briefly describes what at each stack the responsibility of the project is. And on the right side, it lists the examples in, in that particular layer. Okay, but so keep going. I mean, what do you suggest we do with this? So th there were concerns raised on what projects that TAC accepts during the member summit. Maybe it is not clear to members. Maybe it is not clear to the community. Okay. So I, I think, I, so you think we should, we should be clear about the kind of project that is, that would be welcome. I'm going to, I'll let Tracy I'm going speak. to turn to, yeah, Tracy, go ahead. I was going to say, looking at the stack, it looks like we've kind of covered everything except the infrastructure and applications. 
within this stack, we have uh, different projects related to these different aspects. Um, I think the question becomes, is there other things in this um, stack, right? I, I really think applications and infrastructure are probably not the, the sort of- Chrissy, there's a sound would. issue with your microphone. You kind of fade in and out. I fade in and out. It's probably when the wind blows. Um, can you hear me okay now? Not at all. Yes, yeah. I can hear you, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying, I don't think we want anything in the applications and infrastructure, but we have everything else uh, covered. And the question then becomes, is there anything else in these middle four pieces that we want to add, right? Or that we think we should add? All right, thank you. We can hear you better now, so just so you know. Okay, so is there a, does anybody disagree with the statement Tracy just made that basically we, as far as Hyperledger is concerned, we live within those four, uh, four layers in the middle, away from the two extremes at the bottom and the top. Tracy. I think that is how things currently are. Um, but I think the board would give us latitude to come back and propose changes to our scope if we deem it necessary or critical for Hyperledger to continue or expand. Okay. Well, it's a, I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but I would say, I don't want to presume what the board would say, but I think fundamentally what Mark is touching on is, if there was a question about whether we're allowed or not, we always have the option to go to the board to ask you know, for permission. One thing I'll add is there did seem to be um, a clear some clear feedback from members at the member summit um, that, there was an openness to considering expanding the scope beyond uh, just blockchain technologies. Um, I mean, everything here kind of is what I'd consider fitting into the bucket of the current scope for Hyperledger. Um, maybe this is just a, a you know slightly different way to organize it than we organize the the greenhouse um, kind of slide. Um, but I think the the question is whether um, you know whether whether blockchain itself uh, blockchain for business is uh, too constricting or more constricting than it needs to be, uh, and whether there's other technologies uh, that are aligned either with. Um, the decentralized web or or just this web 3.0 concept in general um an example would be ipfs right or other distributed hash table uh types of systems um uh you know uh, in what you know whether there's interest in expanding the scope uh to include those uh you know if we can still use the term blockchain for that or not um but i think there's interest in saying is there is there uh, are we missing any out on anything interesting by uh, having the existing scope be blockchain technologies. Um, and, and I think the, the member community was happy to have the TSE talk about this and consider that and, and come up with a recommendation. Um, and obviously it'd be useful to have a, a, some sort of example, <laughs> some project that wants to come in, but we had said no to because it wasn't blockchain enough or something like that, which I don't think we really have. Um, but uh, yeah. Yes, thank you for that, Brian. I, I... I think that's very relevant to this discussion indeed. Dano? So on a slight different tangent, um, what's, what's the appetite for projects that are basically serving a single chain? Um, for example, you know, Ethereum, we have, you know, the enterprise chains and the splits and everything like that. But, um, you know, if the ETH2 might be one example, there's other blockchain projects that really exist to serve a single public chain and there's no private chain equivalent. Is there much of an appetite for that? Does the scope need to be something that um, an enterprise could take within a walled garden and run independently? Or is it open to required public participation in a single chain? I think that's another question that should be asked, whether it's something that must be severable. 
All right, sounds good to me. That's indeed an interesting question worth considering. Anything else? I mean, to me, this is, you know, I, I'm still trying to, at the end of the day, you know, as I was saying, we, you know, it's not like we have rejected proposals, just, you know, uh, not that I'm aware that we said, no, go away. <laughs> that kind of raises the question. I do think it's interesting, you know, to know, I, I don't know that there is, a, do we, does anybody have evidence that there are projects that would be interested if we were clear on whether they are, they would be welcome or not by better defining the scope of our work? What and was the project? What was the project that uh, came in and ended up as a lab, um, and then kind of has died off? Uh, I'll go look at the lab's website. Yeah, I was going to say there are so many labs that kind of die off. I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Uh, anybody else? And, and Brian, obviously, you know, has a lot of contact with potential uh, members and with projects they might be interested in. So he's definitely the, the most, I would expect to, to, to be the person who is the most knowledgeable about that. And, you know, hot. Yeah, and and you know, you know, I haven't felt any pressure in that respect. To, I haven't found myself saying uh, to somebody thinking about you know open sourcing their technology and asking if Hyperledger is a home. I haven't found myself saying to them, "Oh no, that's outside of our scope." Uh, recently, um, you know, I think uh, uh, it it's it's it has been kind of quiet on that front. Um, uh, so I don't. I'm not feeling the pressure from that direction. Um, I, I'd love to see us inside the core projects think about, um, you know, interfacing with the Web3 or, or um, uh, decentralized web kind of crowd. Um, you know, like a lot of people, for example, combine uh, Fabric or, or, or other DLTs with uh, IPFS as a way to do kind of off-ledger sharing. Um, uh, but haven't seen a kind of a formal way to do that uh, or, or kind of a repeated supported way to do that. And that could be an interesting thing. I don't think our, it would currently be considered outside of our scope because it ties to, to one of these ledgers. Um, but, uh, you know, and then, and then perhaps other interest in supporting um, uh, things like the baseline protocol and other things. But again, I don't find myself going, no, Hyperledger wouldn't be an appropriate home, would not be an appropriate home for that. So. Uh, uh, I'm still unclear uh, if Arun's main proposal and or the reason for bringing up the stack was to ask, um, should we should we expand the scope? Are there are there new projects to bring in? Because everything on that list was something I consider in scope already. Um, or was it more about saying there's a um, this is a different way to organize the uh, the greenhouse? Um, uh, and projects in that way, although I don't think projects neatly necessarily fit into those categories um, uh, exclusively. Uh, or is it third about saying there's there's one true stack that we should align ourselves around um, uh, and have clear handoffs between those layers and that sort of thing? Um, I do like the direction that the um, uh, the the um, uh, is it the the blockchain automation framework is heading in, you know, it, to try to come up with kind of standardized ways to manage the different ledgers out there um, from an infrastructure point of view. Um, more projects like that, I think, would be a really cool thing. So, Arun, you want to answer Brian's question? Right, I'm thinking what to answer. So, I'm thinking why did this topic came up during SWOT analysis in the member summit? If it came up, probably there is either is, uh, communication, mis there is some miscommunication or there is something which is missing between what this quorum here thinks as opposed to what the members in that quorum thought about. Um, so let me do, uh, let me take an action <laughs> item and I'll ask around a few of my contacts who who did attend that member summit and then who did raise this question 
and ask them, hey, what, what was your specific question? Or do you think there was a specific project which was not accepted or were there any concerns, questions raised on that? I think that would be the good, uh, right direction to go with that. And answering his question on, on uh, um, restructuring the greenhouse and then calling them instead of calling them as, um, I mean, just restructuring and then calling them with different names. I think I'm fine with it. It's, so, so the, um, All right, sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dano has his hand up. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe we should consider a statement as to where on the stack we would solicit projects and where we think that we are have sufficient coverage. Um, for example, you know, we say we're interested in developer tools and layer two protocols that interact with our DLTs. Um, but we're pretty full with DLT, so unless you got something special, it's going to be hard to bring. I mean, are we interested in making statements like that as to where we want to solicit projects to come into? Because that might help us fill in these gaps we say we want it here, even if we don't have a project in mind right now. Yes, that's kind of what I was probing for as well. It's like, I think that could make sense to do this. Anybody else? All right, we, we don't have to, you know, come to a, a final answer on this now, but I, I think it is an interesting question that is worth thinking about. So we can leave it at this for today. Uh, Arun, you want to speak more? Hey, maybe not related to this, but I had this question from a long time. So do we, frame so as part of TSC a technical roadmap for next one year or what is the plan that that is done as part of TSC let's say do we fix up on goals and say hey by next year we wish to have these kind of features on at least one ledger or it could be the another so a layer two solution for doing some other task xyz for example IPF is for offline uh, uh, for off-chain data transfer that's kind of becoming common in other ledgers. So do we plan to have a project around that in labs? Is is there anything done by TSC on that front, just on deciding what should be the scope for next one year? So the, that's a good question. The short answer is no, we don't have that. We have touched on this issue in different ways, many times over the years. You know, at the end of the day, as I was saying, the challenge we have is that the TSC doesn't have much power despite what people might expect because it's very uh, bottom up. The, the projects do what they want and uh, each project is responsible for what they do. And we kind of have an oversight but we can't force any project to do something. Uh, so, or, or, or a new project to get started, we can encourage it. This is what I was saying earlier, but it doesn't stop us from looking into it and say, hey, this is what we think, this is an area. And we could indeed, you know, maybe solicit proposals by being clear about, you know, areas where we see a need. And so I think that could be an interesting endeavor for the TSC to take on. So, I, you know, my, my answer to you is really like, yeah, we, there's nothing stopping us. We've never really gone that far. Um, but I don't know that anybody would be opposed to it either. So for the sake of time, you know, we are only eight minutes left. So there's one more question you brought up that I wanted to touch on. So I suggest we leave that topic for now uh, at this and, uh, and let people think about it. And I'm happy to continue the discussion on the next see if people uh, you know and, and in between if people have ideas please do use the mailing list post in the mailing list if you have further ideas or proposals uh, it doesn't have to be completely fleshed out but uh, I think it's good to have the discussion going so for now I would like to go back to the agenda there was one more question that I you raised again on the working group responsibilities so I Honestly, it's a bit 
open-ended. Can you please clarify further this question? Yeah, so this, this maps back to the email which Dan started. I guess this was brought up in the previous TSE term as well. Should we bring in some of these um, working group discussions into TSC discussions, which are non-governance related, which are more towards technical? I see. So I not a, you know, this is again. I mean, I don't know how to answer this exactly. I don't know if people have ideas or reactions. My my gut reaction is you know, is We've never said no. <laughs> so working groups are certainly welcome to bring up topics for discussion to the TSC. And maybe it would be worth making that statement clear that this is definitely an option, whether we want to proactively encourage them and probe them and say, hey, don't you have any topic you should bring up to the TSC? I don't know. This is something we haven't done for sure we could do we do have a monthly marketing devrel call where there is some prodding to try to get more uh collaboration there between marketing and and developers i i don't think it would be out of line to you know kind of prod people uh or or at least make them aware that the forum exists uh bobby Hi, um, I know from my working group that when we stopped doing the quarterly reports, it kind of let us lost for a while. And we're just now getting like an idea of what tasks we want to propose. So I think it would be in um, the best interest of the community if we encourage the working groups more. Um, again, when we don't do the quarterly reports, there's really no tether to the uh, TSC. Uh, that's a, a, a interesting feedback. Thank you. Tracy. Yeah, so I was just going to say that I think some of this also has to do with bringing other ideas into this larger forum, right? So that there's the cross collaboration that uh, that we maybe are missing now might uh, be something that we can try to do. Um, I think at some point there was a suggestion of uh, like at least having one technical um, topic each month um, being brought to the TSC, right? And that could be either from a project or a working group or from a lab um, to have them come and present to the TSC so that people know what's happening out there. Sounds good to me. Bobby, what do you think about that? Um, I already do that on the learning materials homepage. I try to keep a bulletin board of everything that's happening in the community um, up to date so that people can figure out what the working groups are up to. We have a resource library um, and my team goes out to all the different working groups and special interest groups, sits in on the calls and then comes back and reports. And are again, something that we're proposing to the TSC in the future is getting that more interactive with the community. So one thing that is worth clarifying is, you know, we, we used to require working groups to report right on a quarterly basis, just like the other projects. And then when we when we remove the requirements for working groups to deliver any products, it, we we say, well, then you know we should remove that requirement to report. And um, the obviously, like we saw today, the China Group, for instance, they do report every now and then, and so. Again, I, I, you know, just because we don't require it does not prevent working groups from doing it. I hear, you know, Bobby's point about the fact that, well, if we don't require, there's not much incentive for working groups to do it. I, you know, I don't know how to stri strike the right balance on that one. Any other? Anybody on any other ideas or reactions to what Tracy was talking about? Maybe I don't know, just to say this is Andrew, just to say that, uh, that I found it interesting. I would like to take some time to reflect more on, on the possible sedatives on, on, on the entire things, but uh, would thanks a lot Tracy for the effort. Yeah. 
Yeah, and again, I mean, I'm not looking for a final answer at this point, right? These are discussion items that are being brought for discussion. And, and you know, I realize they are kind of big topics, a bit, you know, not super clearly defined. And the discussion is here to help us better define what the problem is and so that we can then look into solutions. So that's kind of the way I, I approach this. And so, you know, I'm happy for people to leave it at this for now and then think about it and, you know, let it uh, kind of. Sure. Any other questions or comments? I think, I think the ideal workflow would be to have feedbacks looping in from these working groups flowing through the technical steering committee and then the TSC then suggest looking at some of these quarterly reports to the project saying that hey this is an idea interesting idea brought up this by by this working group maybe you have a place to get that thing done and it could also be a place where um, in our dev weekly uh, emails we could say hey this is an interesting idea which working group brought up so there isn't scope for us to do something in this in, in this field. I'm, I'm sure um, like the end-to-end -end feedback loop, we should keep it flowing. All right. Okay, so we're about out of time. Any final comments? Otherwise, I, I'll finish just to answer the question. I mean, Arun had also a question about open-ended questions you know, or topics that could be brought up. I mean, I kind of always give people a chance if we have time at the end. And some people hate me for doing this because it's, you know, we kind of like finishing early if possible. And typically if you ask, you always get something brought up almost. But, uh, and you know, in general, I welcome people even adding stuff to the agenda before the call you know, don't expect to be given half an hour if the agenda looks already pretty loaded. But otherwise, it's really a collaborative effort. And so, you know, feel free to add stuff to the agenda if there's anything specific you want to, to, to talk about or bring up. And even if we don't have all the time it would require to fully address it, we at least put it on the radar and we can, you know, allocate more time on the next call or so if needed. All right. So with that being said, I'm gonna close the call on this. Thank you all for joining today. Talk to you next week.